draw before. I have an autonomic nervous disorder and it first showed itself when I was 18, when I was in a car accident and I was injured and the swelling in my face never went away and they kept sending me to specialists and giving me bike guards. It didn't. It took after meeting my husband to he took me to Dr. Jeffrey Okinson, a specialist that had written several journals. He took me to him because none of the other t people in this town helped. And he was somebody that was celebrity's doctor for being the first one that made all these breakthroughs in TMJ and stuff. But in the process of, t of diagnosing me with that, he, he found out I have something. He says it's feather sensitive nervous system and that the slightest thing in my body thinks there's a fire and it will shut off his, you know, the sprinkler system, he says. It makes my own body attack me. So it, it So after... I was really at peace writing and being back in my old world where I was always inspired by Frankie Valley to write songs. So I put together a song tonight and it was flowing and my husband came out and and he was so so delighted to see what I was writing about and we we discovered a lot of new things about each other which was great. Um, because of this, but so, uh, you know, I think my course is going to be, I, I've, I've, the first words that came to mind, well, the very first lines I wrote in the song might end up being the course, but is there, is it wrong to feel, um, can't read my own writing without my glasses. Is it, is it wrong to feel, um, to have needs so deeply and wait, I cannot read. Let me put my glasses back on. I can't read. Okay. Is it is it wrong to have these desires so deeply? Um wait. It's just am I wrong am I wrong to have these desire these needs so deeply or these needs so deeply to be drawn to you so sweetly and then throughout the song it's about what it's like to be real with someone who knows how you truly feel and someone who um who knows the real you who wants more than a rendezvous and um in the song i sing about a, a person that wants the deeper part of you more than a rendezvous and I've got so many lines. I'm looking at each line as I'm doing this. This is the first time I've used st stickies to do a song. And, but they're great because it's like putting a puzzle together. It made it so much quicker than when I just use regular paper. Well, so it's just, it's about singing about someone that, that no other love will do because it's someone that loves you true. I've got, I've got probably 20 lines to this song and it'll definitely, it's definitely all I need when I put this together. I've already got it in my head when I went over this, put it together, but now I have to type it up and you know what's so funny my husband came in here after this and he said you know what I, you're when you're your old self what I love so much is you always take me into another world and I said well you know that's what people I used to go out with or even the nuns at the convent always said they said instantly when they're with me they don't feel like they're they're in on, on a, in reality they don't feel like they have problems they have pain they said that when they were with me, I always made them feel like they were in another realm, like another dimension. <laughs> and I couldn't understand why so many people would tell me that. Or they would tell me they didn't feel like they were with a stranger or they I brought them instant peace. I heard that all the strangers I would meet, even on the bus would tell me this. My my youth and and now, you know, I've had a few people tell me this now, but I'm usually so uptight now. And, you know... 
I was sitting here thinking when I was writing this song because I Frankie always made me want to write. First time I met him, remember how I told you he took me someplace else? Someplace like heaven when he sang. And then when I met him, he seemed like he was a very um, close to God, very faithful. And I felt like, you know, I felt God with him. That's why I wanted to get a, have a career with him. And it's amazing now to hear people say, their impression of being with me was the impression I always had been around him. And it, and it just lets me know that what I thought all along, I really wanted to be in the realm of artistic people, but I didn't have any artistic friends. And then my friend Robert, he was artistic and I went to Australia. He was, he was very famous and he's doing, Hey, Hey, it's Saturday. And all sorts of television stuff, and him and his group got the top award, even all Australians, and they became Australian ambassadors. They got the top Mo Awards in Australia, more than any other Australian entertainer. So I was exposed to him and his friends, and they were artists. But they were more comical. They were not at all serious natured. They were like, he was like Peter Pan. And when I went back to see him 10 years later, and then Bob came over and met me, and then Bob proposed to me, the night of his concert, when Bob saw him perform the first time, then Bob proposed, and I was laughing at him because he was such an innocent soul, a pure soul, that he he kept that childlike innocence, and he was still sleeping in his twin bed, and he had his Bugs Bunny clock, and then when I met him in the group um, when they were in New Orleans, because he was supposed to come here this one summer, and, and then all of a sudden, they got to New Orleans, and his manager had this Las Vegas deal with these trapeze artists suddenly make change all their plans. And Robert calls me up and says, Love, can you get here right away? And when we were in New Orleans, what he wanted to do is go look at all these cartoon um, that were framed in this one shop and Bugs Bunny. And now that he's, he's married, first thing he did to decorate their lovely big apartment in the city Bugs Bunny in the living room. <laughs> so you can see how I had the greatest time with such a free-spirited, articulate guy. But he wasn't into songwriting, and he wasn't into poetry. He was into theatrics. Like, we made some of the props and puppets and things for his show. And he was into um, looking at life through a child's eyes. And... But he's very responsible. He's always worked hard. But he taught me to believe in dreams. His parents did. Because his parents had such a loving relationship. Because they traveled all the time. But he's, he was like, there was nothing he wouldn't do. I mean, going to the drive-in on the way home from seeing Octopussy, he put a fake light on his car and started chasing cars down. So we had these got this car of, of mad, angry men that he did that, chasing us all the way back to his house. He would do stuff like that every day. He would take me down the highway and play Dodge car between semi trucks with his meteor car. It's just that's that's the, one of the artists I've been around. And then his friends were artists, but they they weren't into the deep love songs. And then Frankie Valli, uh, he he just somehow made me feel who the the the, who the the side of me that I really am. You know, he gets me in touch with my muse, the soft side of me. Um, my heart and my own inner sensitivity. And they've only recently told me, people have studied me. They say I am a, a psychic empath, a very deep empath. I haven't even heard what an empath even was. You know, I'm not into stereotyping people or psychology or labeling people. Labeling people. But as you can see, my soul is better tonight. And that's a blessing.